Picture this. James, a buttoned-up American accountant who thinks spicy food means extra black pepper. Then there's me, Nioma, a vivacious Nigerian woman who believes life should be lived at full volume. They meet at a coffee shop. James orders a plain black coffee. Naoma asks for a Wakanda Forever latte with extra vibranium. The barista looks confused. James is intrigued. Their eyes meet over the counter. James. Media. Couple making eye contact in a cafe. Wow, she's beautiful. Wow, he's pale. It's a match made in multicultural heaven. James musters up the courage to talk to her. He asks about her accent. I'll tell you about my accent if you tell me why you're wearing socks with sandals. James looks down, embarrassed. Love at first cultural shock. Their first date is a comedy of errors. James takes Neoma to a fancy French restaurant. He's trying to impress her with his worldliness. Do you have any normal food like goat? The waiter faints. James realizes he's in for a wild ride. As they leave the restaurant, Neoma suggests they go dancing. James breaks out his best robot moves. Neoma shows him how to move his hips to Afrobeats. The other patrons clear the dance floor, partly in awe, partly in secondhand embarrassment. But James and Neoma are too busy laughing to notice. They're creating their own rhythm, a perfect blend of stiff and smooth. Six months later, James is down on one knee. He's rehearsed his proposal in English for weeks. Yes. And Neoma says yes before he can finish. Then she teaches him how to say I love you in Igbo. He mangles the pronunciation. It's adorable. They decide to have two weddings, one in America and one in Nigeria. Double the cake, double the fun, double the cultural confusion. The American wedding is first. And Neoma's family arrives in traditional Nigerian attire. James's family thinks it's a costume party and shows up dressed as cowboys and Indians. And Neoma's uncle asks where he can tie up his horse. James's mother, you can use the backyard. The ceremony is a beautiful disaster. Then comes the Nigerian wedding. James sweats through his agbada, a traditional flowing robe. He's not used to the heat or the fabric. Naoma glides in, resplendent in her aso oke. James tries to do the money spray dance. He ends up making it rain like a malfunctioning ATM. Naoma's grandmother. Best entertainment since the last goat festival. The reception is a clash of cuisines. James's family cautiously pokes at the jollof rice. Neoma's cousins wonder why there's so much cheese on everything. The DJ plays a mix of country music and Afrobeats. Line dancing meets traditional Nigerian moves. It's a beautiful chaos. As James and Neoma watch their families attempt to blend, they realize they've created something unique, a love that bridges continents and cultures. Married life brings a whole new set of adventures. James decides to surprise Naoma by cooking a traditional Nigerian dish. He Googles how to make fufu and ends up with something that looks like alien Play-Doh. Inioma walks in to find him covered in flour, a bewildered look on his face. Oh my goodness, let me teach you the proper technique. They end up ordering pizza. Naoma, determined to embrace American culture, attempts to make a Thanksgiving turkey. She seasons it like it's jollof rice. James's family politely eat the spiciest turkey in the history of Thanksgiving. His uncle drinks a gallon of milk and declares it the most memorable Thanksgiving ever. I'm so proud. James makes a mental note to stock up on antacids. Clothing becomes another source of hilarity. James tries to wear a dashiki to work. He puts it on backwards and inside out. His co-workers think it's a new fashion trend. Neoma attempts to wear James's baseball cap. It sits awkwardly on her braids, making her look like a confused mushroom. They laugh at their reflections, realizing that love means embracing each other's fashion faux pas. Their wardrobe slowly becomes a mishmash of cultures. James's closet now contains more colorful fabrics than he ever thought possible. Neoma's shoe collection expands to include cowboy boots and Crocs. They create their own style, a sartorial representation of their love. It's not always pretty, but it's always them. Their friends start taking bets on what outrageous combination they'll wear next. The real test comes when both sets of parents decide to visit at the same time. We brought a casserole and uh, some concerns about spicy food. And we brought a suitcase full of pepper and worries about bland American cuisine. The stage is set for a cultural showdown. Dinner on the first night is a spectacle. Here's our famous tuna noodle casserole. Hmm, where's the rest of the meal? James's father tries to eat fufu with a fork and knife. Oh dear, what is he doing? 
The dining room becomes a battlefield of culinary misunderstandings. Things come to a head when... How about we all watch a nice, quiet movie together? Or maybe a loud, energetic dance party? James and Neoma exchange panicked looks. They solve the dilemma by putting on The Lion King, satisfying both the American desire for Disney and the African love for stories about their continent. Everyone wins, sort of. By the end of the week, something magical happens. I'm trying to learn some Igbo phrases. And I'm exchanging recipes with James's mom. The dads bond over their shared love of embarrassing their children. James and Neoma watch in amazement as their families blend, creating a new, wonderfully weird dynamic. They realize that love doesn't just conquer all, it creates something entirely new. As their life together progresses, James and Neoma find that miscommunication becomes their love language. James, you're doing great with Igbo, but telling my grandmother you're a pregnant goat instead of saying you're full after dinner was hilarious. Neoma attempts to use American slang. Take a chill pill, dude. She says this during a tense meeting with James's boss. They both get an A for effort and an F for execution. Their home becomes a linguistic battleground. Chai. James starts saying y'all unironically. Their conversations become a unique pigeon that only they understand. Friends listen in bewilderment as James and Naoma communicate in a mix of Igbo, English, and interpretive dance. They've created their own dialect of love. Cultural celebrations turn into comedy gold. James wrapping presents in newspapers is a nice try, but giving my uncle a roll of toilet paper was priceless. Naoma tries to carve a Halloween pumpkin and ends up making pumpkin soup instead. They laugh at their mistakes, finding joy in their cultural blunders. Through it all, they discover that love transcends language and cultural barriers. They may not always understand each other's words, but they always understand each other's hearts. Their miscommunications become inside jokes. Their cultural differences become strengths. They realize that being lost in translation often leads to being found in love. As years go by, James and Neoma's love story becomes legend in both their communities. They're known as the couple who turned cultural clashes into a symphony of laughter. Their home is a museum of mismatched traditions. African masks hang next to vintage American movie posters. The fridge is a battleground of hot sauce and mayonnaise. It shouldn't work, but somehow it's perfect. They decide to start a family, adding a new layer to their cross-cultural adventure. Their child becomes a beautiful blend of both worlds. She has your freckles and my curls. She says y'all with a Nigerian accent. At school events, she proudly serves a mix of jollof rice and apple pie. Her classmates think she's the coolest kid in school. James and Neoma's journey teaches them that love isn't about erasing differences, but celebrating them. They learn to find humor in their mistakes and joy in their discoveries. Their relationship becomes a bridge between two worlds, showing others that love can flourish across any divide. They become ambassadors of understanding, proving that the heart has no borders. In the end, James and Naoma realize they've created something beautiful and unique. Their love story is a testament to the power of embracing differences and finding common ground. They've turned cultural shock into cultural enrichment. Their life together is a vibrant tapestry of traditions, a living proof that love doesn't just overcome differences, it thrives on them. In their perfectly imperfect union, they found a happiness that transcends continents, cultures, and conventions.